All right, so now we're going to do a forecast in Excel with the exponential smoothing method. So exponential smoothing is basically a uh, weighted average of all prior demand. And the way these weights uh, are handled is they do decrease uh, exponentially depending on a uh, constant which we call alpha. And the larger alpha, the faster they decline in weight, and the smaller alpha, they are declining very slowly. Alpha has to be between 0 and 1. So we see the formula down here. The forecast, one period ahead, is uh, alpha times demand of the current period that we just realized, plus 1 minus alpha multiplied with the forecast that we had created for that uh, current period. Okay, so let's get started. So we will just start off. So, so we're at the end of month one. We've seen that demand was 120. We want to use exponential smoothing from, the, from now into the future. So we have to initialize the forecast somehow. And I'm going to just use 120. You can use any value you want, really, but at least at this point in time, that's our best information that we have. So we'll just use that. You know what's coming ahead of us, even though you see demand in, in the following cells. But what we do now is to say alpha, which is a value we have not specified yet. Hit F4 to fix the cell multiplied by demand at time t, which was 120, plus 1 minus alpha. Fix it again with F4 multiplied by the forecast that we had at time t in period 1, which is the 120 we just guessed. All right. So now when we hit enter, the formula goes in. Now, since we didn't choose any value for alpha, the 120 stays exactly the same. If alpha is 0, then we just, it's basically uh, picking whatever um, the forecast was uh, before. So let's just use a zero uh, value of 0.5, just in this case. It's right in the middle between 0 and 1. But this didn't change because our demand was 120 that we'd realized. Our forecast was 120, so the average between the two is still 120. Now let's copy this formula down by clicking on the bottom right corner of the cell. We see we did just create a forecast. Now, this looks pretty decent. Um, however, we really don't know how good this forecast is. So in order to find out how good it is and to have an objective measure, I'm going to create some accuracy uh, statistics. So our, just our error is demand minus the forecast. Our absolute error is the absolute value of that error. Our per absolute percentage error the next thing we're doing is the absolute error divided by demand and our squared error is basically our error the second power and in order to calculate the U statistic which compares our current forecast to uh, the for how good a forecast with the naive method would have been we take uh, current demand oops take the current demand minus the demand one period before and we square that term alright so now I can just copy down all of these calculations and we have values for our errors at least for each period what I'm going to do here, I'm going to highlight each column separately, and I'm going to go to Conditional Formatting, and I'm going to select a certain color scheme. So we want it to be more red the farther in the negative it is, and we're going to, well, let's pick the other way around. So if we over forecast, so it's a negative value, then it becomes green, and if we under forecast, it becomes red. Okay, 
I'm going to do this for every single error column. I'm going to pick one just with red. The farther off it is, the darker the red is. Okay, I'm going to do it for this one as well. And maybe one more for the squared error. I'm not going to do it for the denominator for the U statistic because there it really doesn't tell us anything about our forecast because that's just using the naive method. So now all we need to do is to average up these different error calculations. And that gives us our mean error, our mean absolute error, and our mean absolute percentage error and our mean squared error. Alright. Now for the U statistic, that's a more complicated formula. It is the square root of the sum, and be careful to use the sum, not the, the average, of our squared errors divided by the sum of all of our squared errors for the naive method that we calculated right here. We need to close one more parenthesis and that's it. So, when the U statistic equals 1, then our, our forecast is as good as a forecast using the naive method. If it's uh, a value larger than 1, then our forecast is worse than the naive method, and if it's lower than 1, it uh, is uh, better than the naive forecast. Okay, so we get a value of 0.79, and it's better than the naive forecast. And now let's see if we can do a little better by adjusting alpha. So if we pick a value like 0.3, oh, it's going down. And we pick something like 0.8, well, that's not as good. Now, I could do this by hand, or I can use a uh, solver, which automizes this whole process. I already set this up. So we want to set the objective value, our U statistic. We want to minimize that. And we want to minimize it by changing the value for alpha, which is right here, subject to the constraints alpha is between 0 and 1. I'm using the uh, evolutionary solving method. And I just hit solve. And now we have to wait a little bit until Excel figures out what the best value for alpha is. And in the meantime, basically let me point out some more things about our forecast. If we just look at it visually, we see that in August of the second year, period 20, we're off by 28 uh, units. And this is right here where demand just spikes, but our forecast cannot adjust fast enough. So there's one big uh, miss, and then we have another pretty big miss here in May in period 5. Well, really also in, in, in April, just the opposite. And so we do have a couple periods when our forecast is not as good. And it kind of seems to lag behind a little bit. Okay, so solver has uh, found a value, and that's 0.75, and we see that compared to 0.8, our U statistic went down and all the other accuracy measures went down. And our forecast overall, since alpha is a little smaller, became more stable. So that's exponential smoothing, and we optimized alpha using